So we are back at the shop and we're getting ready to tackle Dale and everything that ails him as far as the heartbeat uh, on that engine. So uh, let's jump in and take a quick peek. Inside this box is what's going to fix us right up today. Well, let's take a look. And a huge shout out to Central Auto Parts in Fredericton, New Brunswick. They had these parts right in stock. Sixteen new push rods. And sixteen new rockers. Let's get them installed. Okay, so we've got pretty much everything ready to roll here. We're getting ready to take the old stuff out uh, and make room for the new rockers and push rods. Now, what I've gone and done is I've pulled the spark plugs because we're going to be taking this thing and setting uh, those lifters without running the vehicle this time. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to start in the firing order. And we're going to start with cylinder number one. We're going to put it on top dead center so we know both of those valves are closed. And then we're going to make our adjustments. Then we're going to rotate the crank a quarter of a turn, which should put us on cylinder number eight at top dead center. And then we'll keep going quarter of a turn the whole way around the engine, which is two full rotations and then everything should be set. We should be able to put it back together, start it up, and we would hope everything would be quiet. So I'm gonna get all these old rockers off and push rods pulled out, and then uh, we'll get started on setting up the new ones. So we've got all of our new rocker arms, our stud nuts, and our push rods all in place all the way around. So what we're going to do now, so we've got cylinder number one marked. We're going to mark all the rest of them in the firing order. So one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. That way, when we turn the crank, we can follow the cylinder pattern based on the rotor direction so we'll know exactly where we are so we'll start with cylinder number one we'll set the valves there and then we'll turn the crank a quarter of a turn which will put us on cylinder number eight top dead center and we'll know that based on the rotor pointing at this mark that we're going to put on the distributor so let's get to marking that distributor Okay, so we're ready to do the first one, cylinder number one. It's on top dead center. We know that because our distributor tells us so. So let's get in there with our 5 8 socket and start tightening this thing up. So apparently what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to tighten this until there's very little to no movement on the push rod. We have a long ways to go. Start to feel some tension there now and that push rod won't move at all so we know that we've gone too far so we're just going to reverse it back off a couple quarter of turns here so there's very very little play up and down but it still spins a little bit with my thumb and finger and right there she's tight so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing to the intake side and then we're going to start spinning the motor around quarter turn at a time following the firing order and get these valves set. All right, so we've got cylinder number one set. We're going to go back here and I'm going to set the camera up so you guys can see the distributor move as I crank onto the crank bolt and we're going to line the rotor up with this mark right here, which will now mean cylinder number eight because it's the next cylinder in the firing order will be at top dead center. So 
So now that we've got that set there, we're going to adjust cylinder number eight. So where we left off was, is we've got all the valves adjusted. We've got the extra 90 degree turn on each of them once we got them to where we want it to. We've got the uh, engine spun back over to top dead center and we're getting ready to put the distributor on and wire it back up. Then we can put the valve covers on, give it a first start and make sure that there's no more noise. So what I'm gonna do is put the distributor back together and, and uh, plug wires and We'll try and button this thing up. So we've got the top end of the motor put back together. The valve covers are on. The distributor cap is on. The wires are wired up. We're getting ready to start this thing, but before we do, I want to show you something. If you guys will notice, this little solenoid right here welded onto this bracket, we were having idle issues when we pulled it into gear, and this little solenoid is going to kick it down and give it a little bit more idle. And the way I've got it hooked up is not to the air conditioning, which most people would do, but just to accessory power for now because, well, I think the problem in the low, super low idle is in the stall converter. Um, I just think it's too much for this uh, engine being a stock converter. So someday, maybe we'll change that, but who knows? Let's get this thing started and see if the noises are gone. <laughs> well, one thing I forgot to do was put the fan clutch back on. Drop the pulley right off her. So let's do that and we'll try to start one more time. So take two on the engine start and as you can see we do have the uh, fan clutch back in place. Time to get this thing started. Hopefully. And there we go guys, the valves are adjusted. This thing has not ran this quiet in a long time. I'm gonna get to drive this home tonight. Oh man, I am so friggin' pumped. I know one thing that I forgot to do, and that was tighten up the alternator. So I'm going to do that now. We're going to go for a drive and close out this video. Let's get this thing out on the road for a drive. So it 
Since at this point in the game, it's probably worth noting that upon first startup, one of my concerns were that we had collapsed lifters like we did last time. And obviously you guys heard it. No collapsed lifters. When you take the time to set the valve lash properly, it should work out perfect every time. And that's what we did this time around with no issues really, other than sweating like a dog and you know a few busted knuckles we got her all put back together we even got the wires put in the proper order on the first go that's a success chalk that one up to doing something right this week anyways uh we're not that far from the shop we just out for a little cruise uh we come on to it when we left there it worked great and uh you know just like it always did and it's quiet no more clattering rockers or whatever was making the noise in the first place so Tim my mechanic and I have surmised simply that those original rockers were just that they were original rockers likely from the early 70s metal fatigue is probably what caused the problem so we hope that we have fixed that problem right from the get-go with a brand new set of everything as it is right now, everything in that motor is new. So hopefully we can get another few thousand miles under our belt before we run into any major issues. Hopefully, knock on wood, we don't run into any at all. That's going to be it for this video. I'm sorry it was a little bit of a long one, but we finally got to the bottom of what was going on and we got it fixed. And now we can enjoy maybe another month, month and a half of driving Dale trouble free. So I'll end this video with a couple of things. One, don't forget, old car guy merch is available in the description box below. You can go down there, check out my Spreadshirt store and see if there's something there that you like. That's just one more way to support the channel other than just watching these videos, which I really appreciate. If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button and bell notification. That way you get notified every time I go live on the Car Guy and Six Fan Show, which is happening every Thursday evening with my pal Grant. Right up here, Grant and I host an automotive talk show, which we have coined the gold standard of automotive talk shows on YouTube. We've even turned it into a podcast for all you potties out there. A couple of car guys talking cars with lots of people in the chat, lots of questions, lots of interaction. We have a lot of fun. I hope you can join us Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern, 9 local time. And I encourage you all to stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. Okay, so we're going to try this two camera thing. So we've got camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two action is we're going to mark top dead center no we're not we're going to mark cylinder number one right down here on the base of the distributor and then we're going to go around and label each mark with where the cylinder then we're going to go around and label each mark of can't even talk never can talk never can talk Okay, so we've got the, got the what? If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Blah, 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 blah. Get that subscribe button, baby. Shut up over there. And uh, Grant and I host the old. Are you still running? Did I forget you? Come on, you come with me.